You're so adorable. What's so wrong about it? <laughs> Every great story is only as good as its villain, along with these other things. Without conflict, there is no struggle to overcome, no triumph. In almost any story, the villain plays a vital role in the hero's journey. Without the villain, good has nothing to triumph over, nothing to challenge the protagonist's values. Take the Joker from the Dark Knight, swell looking fellow with a hankering for chaos. The complete opposite to Batman, who has a justice fetish. A hero must have a villain, whether it's in a film, book, or game. Whenever I think of my favourite villain, I only often think of one man. Real life Kevin Spacey. The real villain was the sexual predator within us all. Okay, even if Kevin Spacey has been in this series before, it's, it, it, it's not him. Call of Duty and first person shooters in general have always lacked an impressive antagonist. They turn up for a cutscene or two, and then you kill them at the end. You never grow a personal attachment, and they never personally do anything awful to the player. Except the occasional torture scene where they just stand there all menacing like what other people do with it. There are of course exceptions, but none of them have ever made a lasting impression on me. All... but one. Woods, Hudson... They created this... for Osefina. Raul Menendez is the main antagonist of Call of Duty Black Ops 2, and he's one of the most despicable and twisted antagonists almost any series has ever seen. He's cunning, intelligent, broken, and driven by an unmatched thirst for revenge. His planning, his persistence, they're all second to none, and depending on the player's actions, he can actually succeed in his plans to destroy the American government using its own people. He's not some Soviet general with armies to spare. He's a Nicaraguan gunrunner with a vendetta. And his ideals have been planted into the mind of over 2 billion people who he describes as living in abject misery. He's waiting for an opportunity to unleash the revolt. At first you'd expect him to be some generic Soviet or Red China ally throwing men at you like there's no tomorrow. Like some of the weaker villains in the series. But you couldn't be more wrong. Menendez isn't working for some big government. He's a narco-terrorist, influencing politics through violence and intimidation, sowing his way into both the CIA and the Panamarian dictatorship. And we see how he gained his power. His introduction alone shows how dangerous he is, and how different he is from a generic bad guy. He's introduced in the first mission, merely operating a radio, ordering the legendary Krevchenko, calling him a mere puppet, and if we remember anything about Kravchenko, this, uh, this guy's got some guts. You point a gun at him and you should have this in the back, right? You son of a bitch! You struggle with him and he quickly overpowers you until he tries to block a bullet with his face, leaving him deformed, a scar that not only shows the monstrous side to him, but reminds you of what you did to him. A lot of Menendez's driving force is suffering. He's experienced loss after loss, he's been thrown into a perpetual state of torment by his enemies, and he now sees it as the one true punishment, often sparing the people he truly despises, so they live long enough to suffer. Your life will be consumed by absolute loss. Then and only then will you understand what you have done to me. Everything he's been through, all the violence, the death, it was all caused by us. Menendez wasn't born a villain. His hatred for America, Woods and David. It wasn't born. It was nurtured through tragedy. Which kind of makes you sympathise for him. We see him change from a young, ravishingly handsome, insane barbarian to this philosophical, patient old man who knows every step you'll make. Though every once in a while, the facade will slip and we see the hate is still there. Your father is dead. And this people... I think what a lot of games do wrong is they tell you how dangerous the villain is without actually showing you. You're told to stop them, but you don't actually care about stopping Solomon or Perseus. 
But with Menendez, you share a sort of bond with him. Meeting him face to face on multiple occasions. Each time he's shown you his malice in some way. And by the end of it, you feel as you can't look away. We understand his morals, what made him this way. Even if we don't consent to, you know, the mass murder bit, we can still sympathize with him. He's never shied away from personally demonstrating his cruelty. This is in complete contrast with the other villains in the series. Makarov is this super villain. He did a lot of bad stuff like killing 30,000 men, killed soap, and caused World War III. But we never get a clear reason to why he did it other than ultra nationalism. But Menendez, it was something more personal. His driving force of madness and rage allowing him to enact truly monstrous displays of inhumanity. <laughs> Capturing and torturing Frank Woods for months on end, torturing and killing his own men in front of him, locking him away in a shipping container, alongside his decomposing brothers, which may have caused Frank to hold a bit of a grudge. A simple action can change everything. It can be your driving force, the thing that pushes you over the edge. And for Menendez, it was the death of his sister Josefina. It was taken from me. Do you know what that feels like yet? She was the reason for me to live. What about you, David? What drives you? Is it me? It blinded him with vengeance. All he wanted to do was make those who wronged him suffer. Mason! He's unpredictable and manipulative, always finding a way to make you suffer. Your best friend, Alex Mason, is dead. By your own hand. Do you understand why? He was gonna kill David. Because you must suffer, as I have suffered. Our actions led to this, building up this man of such violence and hate. You see firsthand what he's capable of, and the power he has amassed. It's almost admirable. Everything he does is by his own hand. He doesn't order it, he personally pulls the trigger. Whereas Makarov isn't shown to do that much at all. Except that, uh, that one time. Makarov may have detonated the nuke, but you don't see him kneecapping fools. Again, Makarov is this super villain that you hate, and you wanna, spoiler alert, hang that motherfucker from the top of a hotel. But he's a black and white villain. There isn't much character there, because it seems like he just shot up an airport for kicks. There's no character there that we can just grasp onto. And this goes for a lot of villains, not only in games, but in films too. I watched Dread a little while ago, and I realized the big bad Mama is just chilling in her room for like 90% of the film, until she takes a quick trip off her balcony. She's built up as this dangerous, badass leader, and one of the most dangerous people in the entire city. And when we finally get up to her, we're met with... Such a disappointing climax. But with Menendez, there's never a disappointment. If someone says he's dangerous, we know that's a massive understatement. This guy leveled Los Angeles and killed almost all the foreign leaders through patience and manipulation. He's such an intelligent villain. If someone says he's dangerous, we believe every word of it. I mean, hell, look what he did aboard the Obama. Almost disabled the entire US naval fleet. That's not something just anyone waving a gun around can do. That takes some planning. But one of the main things I remember Menendez for is just how poetic of a villain he was. This subtle guitar melody following everywhere he went, and it's a, it's a pretty nice song. It was also composed by the very same man who plays Menendez and Jack Wall, who seems to not be able to play guitar. Come, come on, Jack, you, you got- Jack, 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 you composed the fucking song! He's not just an instrument of pure rage, he's philosophical, studied, he carries his ideologies around, inspiring billions. Yeah, they may be driven by, you know, an unquept thirst for rage, but they're still there, and still very prevalent. He even tells you to study Ulysses, a book that I have no intention to read because it's long. And with his talk of just and fairness, what will his end be? This man who butchered your loved ones in a merciless crusade of rage. Finally at your mercy. Any other game would give you a small aimer and a trigger to pull and that's it, roll credits! But no, 
Just like everything, it all comes down to a choice. You can take the moral high ground and apprehend him, making sure he faces justice for his crimes. Or follow his philosophy and let the suffering overwhelm you. Take vengeance for all the lives he's taken and seal his fate as a martyr.